Okay, hi. So today I'm gonna be doing a iPad mini repair. This one was sending with a uh, customer say the backlight and the touch connector both damaged. So let's have a look. Um, okay. So first you want to confirm, well I want to confirm that the backlight is indeed bad. So as you can see, there's a little Apple logo here and there's no backlight on the back of the screen. So that's conf once that's confirmed, um, I'm going to proceed to do the backlight repair. Sometimes it could be the LCD screen uh, that could be faulty, but um, since these backlight is so bad and I also I can get to test it once um, it's open so I'm just gonna have a look first okay and so I'm looking for a sheer card there we go alright okay so this is how I cut it. You have to do it. Okay, so you already can see the backlight filter is toast. It has a it's burned, and you want to cut this between the filters. Oh, you can see here. Okay, I like to work on a um, super magnet. It's like a giant magnet mat. Uh, we sell this on the website. It's just convenient because everything gets. Look, it's like super strong here. Get that? Okay, so anything metal is gonna uh, attach to the magnet, unless it's aluminum or other alloy like gold and silver. But anyway, if you have a hard drive, keep it away from the magnet. It works great with uh, ID devices, phones, and whatnot, but not so much if you have a hard drive. It will destroy the hard drive, so. If you're using this magnet, don't um, keep the hot dryer away. Hold on, I'm just trying to get my... So I just moved to this location. Everything is set up. I'm get my microscope up and running. There we go. And... So I'm gonna try to get, okay, so you guys can see, right now, let me get see from this camera, I hope the zooming function is working good, and I probably should get a micro lens for this, um, I guess you guys could, could see it, like, whoa, what happened here? Um, Okay, that's fine. So okay, so right now it's on the mic micro mode. Let me get it to focus. So you can see it here. There's a lot of dot in the um, silver dot between the filter right here. Uh, that tells you that it's burned because it's just it's gone. Um, so what I'm gonna do is. Yeah, a soldering iron. I guess I could use this one. I have been using a um, metal soldering iron on the wire. Okay, so you want to do what you want to do is uh, you want to put it under the microscope. You don't really need a microscope for this one because it's, it's a simple repair, but I just I like to uh, walk on the microscope. I like to see what I'm doing. Um, you can buy one on Amazon for the cheap one is like a hundred something dollars, twenty dollars. Or get a fancy one like I have, which costs you six hundred give or take. For the money, if, if you do a lot, I, I don't know, it's like, it's a good investment if you like to look at small stuff. Even if this, you don't do this repair every day or something. But the $200 one will work fine. And if you have good eyesight, you don't really need a microscope. 
Alright, so he puts on flux on the part you want to do the repair and clean the soldering iron. Well, I don't mind the background, that's a um, so air purifier. I use it to suck up the smoke. Okay, so I'm getting some of the low melting alloy. Okay, very good. It's on my soldering iron. And I'm touching one side of the filter. Putting it loose. So this is a new soldering iron head. I don't really like it because it's too long. I don't know, it's, it takes some time to get used to using a different soldering iron head. I don't know if it's going to transfer heat that well. So let's we'll see, alright, it's kind of doing stuff. Alright, it worked. So that's good. I normally use the um, copper alloy soldering iron head because that one I know it works well and I'm used to it. Okay, so that's it. You turn the. Once you remove the filter, you turn the board and you find a new filter. I have to look around because I just got here. I know I brought some filter with me. Maybe not. I don't know. I need to go get some filters. So this is the backlight filter, this is the backlight dial, and sometimes you do need to change the 4 7 coil, only if these two fails, it's not always, unless the board is really damaged, um, that when you need the coil, but it's always good to have it just in case, since it's not actually not that expensive to have the coil. Okay, another thing, cool thing about this, using this magnet mat is if you have a little teeny component like this Let me show you If you drop it, this is really small, right? So it jumps and flies If you only have one especially It, it, suck, it gets sucked up onto the magnet It doesn't really damage the component Because these components are not um, neg uh, How do I say? It's not sensitive to magnets Okay so you won't lose it if you have a magnet like this especially when you walk on it and you just solder it back on um, I really like to do it this walk is really hard to do without the desoldering alloy I'm using that's why when you buy any kind of repair kit from my website I always include a little bit of flux and a little bit of this dissolving alloy just enough for you to do the job that you purchase okay so I only put in the filter um, if you're lazy you can go ahead and change the dial as well or at the same time but I want to see, I want to do a demo, so I want to show you that you don't necessarily have to change all the parts if the other parts is still good. Okay, putting this back on is a little bit tricky, like the screen. And you always want to try to do the battery last because um, you don't want to risk of shorting anything. And remember, you saw. No backlight before. I just turn on the microscope light uh, from this iPad. Now you have backlight. That was it. It was just the backlight filter. So this board was 
pretty lightly damaged. Most of the time, I do see the dial get burned as well. Um, and that was it. It just changed the backlight filter, and it was pretty quick, especially if I don't have to keep on talking like this, right? On and on and on. And this should have probably be done in the whole setup. If you're ever being set up, I guess like less than five minutes. Yeah. But then I gotta always uh, spend time testing it and other stuff. But if it's the, the dial, uh, the black. The filter doesn't work out, then you have to change the dial, you have to change the coils, and you do want to test if any of the backlight track is grounded. Um, if it is grounded, then this board is too far beyond damage. And if, if, if you do have um, um, any kind of track damage, it's possible to jump it. That might, that may fix it to, to breach the connections. So, that was it. I'm waiting this iPad to uh, boot up. Okay, there we go. I think it was because on the magnet, maybe that's why it was off. Anyway, when you, every time when you restart with no battery, this it takes a while for the iPad to put up. So you just screen, you get backlight, everything works. You're happy. Now, the next stage of this iPad repair, I want to turn it off, but I can't. There's no um, touch. So what you can do is you want to unplug the battery. It's always safe to do so because the moment you unplug it, everything is off. There's no current left. Well, technically there's a little bit of current left uh, the second you turn it off, but it goes away after. It dis dissipates soon. Um, so the reason I did that first is because we still have the touch connector as standard, let me show you. So this, this board has two problems. This connector is really easy to be damaged. Um, it's partially due to the fact that it was designed to fail, like, very fragile. Very fragile, very fragile connector. Okay, I was trying to get my camera to zoom. Um, and also partially because I think Apple eventually put some glue on this connector, actually. So that makes it really frail. Okay, so I'm gonna try the higher method, and before I do that, I do want to make a little face shield. Okay, so to do this, you can use uh, aluminum foil and cap some tape, or you could use just kitchen use um, aluminum oh, I mean foil I got this from Costco as you can see I like to buy my stuff from Costco okay so this will work as well it's not quite the same as tapes this it, although it doesn't make that much smoke as much as aluminum tape All right, so I'm gonna adjust my camera the purpose of this shell is to protect any of these little components from flying off due to the heat on them to blossom. Use a higher gun. You definitely need flux and make sure you get good quality flux that works. You don't there's no necessarily one best flux, as long as the flux works and get the job done, then it's good enough. So don't go crazy there on flux. There are some really bad flux coming from China, so avoid those. I don't know what they put in there. Those are not really flux, I don't know what that was. Alright, so this kind of is very fragile. Um, the solder they put on the board is left free. It melts around 230 degrees Celsius, so you need to bring this temperature to up to at least 250 to be able to get this thing off. So right now I'm just heating the board, heating the board. The good thing about having the microscope is uh, you get to see when the solder is melted. Or you can just test it by tapping it. The air speed a little bit. And I think my temperature was set to 
There we go. See, like I said, this this connector is really, really frail. Soft. Uh, the solder is almost melting. Uh, I don't like the hot air method. Um, I know people do this on YouTube, but I don't like it. Uh, Alright, so I'm gonna do what I do normally. This method sucks. Uh, higher method. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna disconnect. There we go, a screwdriver. Yeah, I like, I like my method better. It's just more consistent. Because if I put any more heat on this board than I already did, I'm afraid of risking um, getting out the battery. And this lithium battery, you really don't want it to be blasted with heat. So, it makes no sense to me to uh, heat out the board to close to 300 degrees Celsius when you're taking it off anyway. Alright, so this little face here on the camera is kind of annoying, you just get rid of it. This is the part you want to be very careful of. Um, if you're not, then you're going to end up sending this to me to fix this connector. It's very fragile, so be careful. It's, even, it's just as fragile as the touch connector. Not as much, but very. Alright, then you want to remove this... Uh, ribbon cable it slides 180 degree out and you want to use a pry tool or um, white credit card or just a white SIM card like this and a little bit of oil helps so I'm gonna use a little bit of flux just to lubricate my card a little bit. And we'll go from the side, go slowly, Just slide it in, make sure there's no um make sure there's no screws on the board. And the PVC card doesn't work, you can always use a pry tool. Just be careful. Slide it in. Do it very slowly. Slide it up and down. There's some glue in the back of the board. Okay. And make sure there's no screws. If you don't do this, some of the iPad has screws, especially like iPad Air. iPad Mini doesn't. So this this is annoying uh, tape in the back. This is actually conductive tape, but it's really not needed. There's multiple grounding uh, in the back. Once you have one, they are grounded. You know, disconnect the Wi-Fi connector very carefully. They do break. Here I'll just pull it. And voila! Now it can work without this. Okay, so now, again, I don't like to use hot air. It's too imprecise and sloppy. 
so I'm gonna use my soldering iron to melt this. So you wanna use a little bit of uh, the soldering alloy from my website. So this is why I send you a little bit of the soldering alloy. Hold on, where did my uh, soldering iron do? To do this, you don't want your soldering iron to be too hot. If it's too hot, then it may damage the pads that you are uh, trying to do it. Alright, so you want to first prime the pins and just go along the pins. Try to get some alloy on it. And this is why I don't like the soldering iron tip. The important thing is these pins don't want them to be damaged. Uh, it's kind of hard to do this like while recording because I have to mind the camera angle and also my hand can't touch it. Ah, uh, there we go. I'm joining in for you. I wonder if I can get a better lens or something to get the marker to work better. Okay. Alright, so this is the tough, tough part, using a cheap soldering iron head to do this. My you, this is a brand new head, but still, it's hard to use. It's just, it's not conducting heat very well. This is, prob this is probably a, like an iron, iron head in China. So the idea is you want to get these gold pins to come up on the buoy and you want to push them in. Okay. The retainer on the fourth side, you can do whatever the hell you want to do with them. Like they are they're really not important. You can always make sure you have enough flux to do this. The retainers can break and you can even damage the pad, it doesn't really matter. You just need to get them off. It's, they are not active connections. Okay, I, li I like to have a lot of flux when I do this. Because if I have a lot of flux, it's unlikely for you to damage anything due to the temperature is already uh, equalized to non harmful less than 300 degrees Celsius. This uh, flux has a flashing point that's lower than 300 degrees Celsius, obviously. So, uh, it's just very important for you not to damage the pad. Once you get to this point, you can either heat it up with uh, hot air or you can just use a pin to it's probably will come right off like that. Wiggle wiggle. Like that. Because all the connections are salty solid. Okay, you just clean this connector. Um, get it. Don't have a toothbrush, but you can have a toothbrush. I do have a toothbrush. I just have to go get it. Or you can just get some um, chem white and wipe it. Okay. Now, remember what you have on here is low melting solder. So to get rid of it, you don't want that to stay on there. You use that for the soldering, right? To solder, you want to use uh, regular 183. Celsius solder. So you want to 
so gob. Dude, does he really need flux? Like lots of flux to transfer heat well. Okay, you wanna soak it out on this other wick. Clean the board. It doesn't need to be that clean because most of the solder is still original that was on the board. So you need to get whatever you can to get it off this majority of it onto the solder wick. Yeah, I'm not sure about using the magnet as the surface to um, work on this. When you do touch it, it melts. So use the magnet for iPhone screen repair, but don't do it, use it for soldering. I normally have a piece of glass under it, but I'm just gonna since I have a, like a laboratory, I have like um, I think this is granite countertop using the lab so I'm gonna just use the granite on the top because it's practically indestructible it's designed for this kind of stuff um a little bit dirty though okay it's gonna get messy um yeah this magnet it's great for screen repair but also good for soldering because if the my soldering iron touches it then it burns. Okay, now you want to prime. We'll point these pads. Make sure they have all 180 solder instead of low temperature and more flux constantly have to replace flux the active ingredient gets burned off and the solder on sucks Okay, when you make a bridge like that, you see the little blob over there? Just clean your soldering iron and tap it afterwards. Good. Okay, and that will be it. Now, you... Okay, this is the connector. Five time mini touch screen. Just one. Half of this repair is really just pointing the camera to the right direction. Funny. Focus in the camera. Yeah. 
longer focused. Boy, that's blurry. I'll move my leg. Uh, let's redo this. Okay, that's better. Uh, that's what all works. Could be better. Put flux on it. Be generous with the flux, since I sell them so cheap. Practically free. For the most part, they are free. I do give them out, like, very... almost every time you buy something. Without it, you really can't do anything. So we just use flux. Oh, oh, uh, kind of important. If you want to heat this on the back, this is the font. You want to um, hold on, just hang in with me. You want to remove this piece of film that's on the board because otherwise it will make really bad smoke. There's a piece of plastic here. You want to remove all of it, it's just part of it. It's, it's a piece of vinyl film. There we go. Goodbye, film. I need to remove completely and just leave it alone. And then you can come back. See? The flux is so sticky. The connector just stay there. There we go. Uh, I like to do this under the microscope just so I can see what I'm doing. My hot air iron, it's hot air thing, it's ready, it's hot. And you want to do this, heat it up from behind and right behind it until the solders are melted or the flux is start to bubbling, boiling. That's when you know it's ready because um, this flux has an active uh, flushing point that's a little bit higher than the melting point of 183 degrees Celsius. So it's about there. I mean, you can see some of the solders are melted. It's melting. We're still below the flux, flushing point, but it's, it's pretty much soldered already. Connector's on. And I like to push it back and forth, just to make sure the connector is it's really soldered on. So if you send this out to other people who's not doing this using this method, I am guessing um, it might just come right off because they may not have a good connection when they do the soldering. If you just go in from the top, like heating it from the top instead of from behind, these joints, remember this connector is very fragile? Okay, so if the connector is already very fragile and you don't Let me turn off the everything. Okay, that makes more noise. Um, if the connection is already very fragile and the connection points where you solder it's not quite there and it didn't actually completely melt it and wet the joints, then 
it may just come right off when you plug it in and pull. So that's that's my guess. Okay, and you clean up alcohol and cam white. So just tap tap tap. This is to clean the SS blocks. Okay, now alcohol and chem wipe looks great. And that's it. You have perfect soldering. It's perfect because I did it and it's under microscope. Okay, it's perfect because it's under microscope. And I can see that it was dumb. It's kind of important to be able to see. Okay, so you can put this back if it stays. Then deform it. If this thing is wingled and doing weird stuff, then the ball may not stay down flat. Okay, very sticky. Now, Extra step. You gotta have to put this board back. So there's an advantage doing it, heating it from top. I just don't think it's worth it. The disadvantage outweigh the risk. I mean, the this, the risk outweigh the benefit of doing so. Okay, then make sure all the connectors on top. Battery connectors out. Plugging this back in, even if some of the connectors side. That's it's a bit A here. In the back, then you just use your tweezer gently, getting it on top of the board instead of behind the board. And wipe out any flux that's already on the board. Push it down. It has some glue in the back, so let's still do that. Okay, it's a lot easier to do with two hands. You need to feel these connectors. And seal helps too. That was kind of hard to put in while on the camera. Uh, I need a pen. Putting these Wi-Fi connectors back can be kind of a pen. You need a tweezer and something to hold it down. For the scooter, I will do it. Just be careful. You don't want to push too hard and go over. It's going to be gentle because if you go on the board and your hands slide, it can. Um, break other parts then if that happens don't don't worry too much just solder it back on I always leave the battery connector unplugged until the customer gets it because uh, oh there's two more connector here just put it in in case the customer doesn't know how to do it or they don't know the connectors unplugged and they tell you that oh why doesn't my camera work stuff like that this is unplugged this connector you gotta be careful it's the only thing other than the touch connector that breaks. Okay, so let's plug in. And I don't want to plug the camera back. Uh, sorry, the power back because that's how you show things. Put the face shield back if the frame is not too damaged. If the frame is too far gone, like you cut everything. 
then don't put it back because um, if this thing touch whatever that's on it without like two parts matching then you're gonna short things so sometimes I don't put this cover back um, A I probably forget B if you put it back it, if I put it back it's a risk of shorting things and I don't put it back you don't need this so just remember that but it's possible I forget to put this back it's, it's kind of not necessary in my opinion so I don't think about it um, but sometimes like like I say if you cut the outer frame too much like sometimes if I do that because I have to get to the coil and the dial then putting this back is a giant risk because any any of this metal touching the stuff on board you're shooting the thing all over the place okay thank you for watching and visit us on cyberdogllc.com ta-da next repair that takes forever because I have to record so